Hello everyone, welcome to another Router Gods video. My name is Humphrey Chung and in this video we're going to take BGP and we're going to continue on from before where we took two routers and just connected them with the fast Ethernet interface. Here what we're going to do is we're going to take the same topology, same addressing scheme and instead of connecting between the fast Ethernet interfaces we're going to connect with the loopback interfaces. So why would you do this in real life? Well this is probably what you'll be doing in real life because we're assuming that you don't have just a single link connected between your routers. The whole point of having routers is you want redundancy, you want to have multiple paths, and you should always be able to get to your loopback interfaces if you have other paths going between the routers. So it's going to be a pretty easy configuration. We're going to go back into router 1. Oops. Go back into router 1. I'm going to wipe out my BGP configuration by typing in no router BGP1. Start over again. So router BGP1, neighbor command. So now we have to decide what the IP address of our neighbor will be. So I'm on router 1 and I'm trying to peer with the loopback of router 2. So loopback of router 2 is 1.1.1.2. 1.1.1.2. Remote AS is going to remain the same, Remote AS1. I'm going to go over to Router 2. Conf T. No Router BGP1 to wipe out the configuration. I'm going to move my terminal window over. I'm going to do Router BGP1. Neighbor. And the loopback address of router 1 is 1.1.1.1. So neighbor 1.1.1.1. Remote AS1. And let's see if our peering comes up. And it looks like nothing is happening. So we're going to try something out. Let's see if we can ping from router 2 to router 1. Remember, in the previous video we said that if you can't ping the interface you're trying to reach, you're not going to be able to form a peering arrangement. So let's ping the loopback 1.1.1.1. And we can't ping the loopback of router 1. Okay, so that probably makes sense why we can't form a peering arrangement. Let's do a show IP route. Yeah, so 1.1.1.1 is not in our routing table. A couple ways we could do it. We could insert a static route. We could also insert, we could also start up uh, IGRP or RIP or uh, a lot of stuff. Any type of interior gateway protocol, interior routing pro protocol to get this up and running, to get connectivity. So in this case, uh, let's make it simple. Let's do a simple IP route. So if I want to get to 1.1.1.1 and we have a slash 32 mask, I'm going to send it out to 10.10.12.1. And we're going to need to do a similar thing on router 1. So we're going to go on router 1, do an IP route 1.1.1.2, mask is going to be a slash 32. 10.10.12.2. Exit out of there. Show IP route. There's our static route. Let's see if we can ping 1.1.1.2. We can ping. Okay, let's see if our show IP BGP. Let's see, let's do summary. Okay, so here's what you could see. We see that we have a neighbor IP address. But don't get too excited yet because if you looked to the right, up and down, never, so we've never actually formed a complete peering arrangement, and we're in the active state, so we're sort of halfway there. Okay, so let's see here. We know we can ping it. Let's see if we could telnet to port 179, so this is another test you could do. So telnet 1.1.2. And here's where you could specify a port we scroll up here. You can see port number there, so I can enter in 179. 
Ah, connection refused by remote host. Hmm, that's interesting. So let's see if we could change that. So when we typed in this telnet, it actually came from the fast ethernet interface right here. And this is the whole point of BGP. BGP, when you peer, it's going to expect your source and destinations to match. So what this means is, if you're trying to peer to the loopback address, and the router 2 is trying to peer to your loopback address, it's going to expect the TCP, TCP packet to come out from that address. But in this case, it's actually coming out from the fast Ethernet interfaces. So we need to do a BGP command, which is called update source. I'm going to go back to router 1, conf t, router BGP1. I'm going to do another neighbor statement, so it's neighbor 10.10.12. Or actually, it's going to be the loopback address, so it's 1.1.1.2. Do a question mark there just to see what we got, and we have a command called update source, and it's going to be from loopback zero. So what we're doing with this command is we're saying, okay, all the BGP statements coming from router one are going to be sourced from loopback zero's address. Going to hit enter on there. Going to have to do the same thing on router two. Going to minimize my router one window. So router BGP1, neighbor 1.1.1.1, update source, loopback 0. Going to wait a couple seconds, see if our adjacency comes back. Do a show IP BGP summary. Okay, there you go. We have a neighbor 1.1.1.1. We've been up for about 30 seconds. Haven't received any prefixes because we haven't advertised anything. We do show IP BGP neighbor. Got a neighbor, shows router ID, BGP state is established. So we are good. And we could verify it by also going to router 1. Router 1 should also have the same stuff. If we do show IP BGP summary. We have a neighbor 1.1.1.2. We've been up for about a minute and no prefix prefixes exchanged. Okay, so how did we make it happen? Let's do a show run, pipe S and BGP. This is actually in two parts. We have our regular neighbor statement from before. We've got another neighbor statement with the update source of loopback zero. So you could think of all of our BGP statements are coming from loopback zero. And on, on the other side, router two is connecting to the same loopback. So everything has to match. And we also have a IP route statement, a static route statement right about here. This static route statement gets us connectivity from router one to router two's loopback. And we have a similar IP route statement that gets us from router two to router one's loopback. So you can see just on a simple, what looks to be a simple peering arrangement in IBGP, you have to do a couple extra things. You have to have connectivity and you have to source your BGP updates, source your BGP packets from the same interface the other router wants to connect to. So everything has to match. Okay, so that was a simple, well maybe not so simple, IBGP setup between loopbacks with two routers. Thanks for watching.